Well, hello. Hey, thanks for joining me here in my shop on this not so sunny day. Um, so uh, I think I might, in the next hour, manage to get this back together, get the IF transformer back together, and uh, get it in the radio, get the whole radio working again. That'd be a great goal for today. That would be that would be fantastic. So um, one the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read the comments. I'm not going to do it on video. Don't worry. I'm just going to stop right away. I'm going to read the comments from yesterday's video and uh, look at the helpful stuff in there. There might be some good ideas for helping me do this next stage before I get get in over my head, basically. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so I read the uh, comments. Thanks very much. Uh, they're just as I had hoped. They're focused on how to treat these uh, the ends of these wires to uh, bear up the copper so I can make a, a connection. So thanks for the comments, but uh, no news there, I'm afraid. I've already kind of got it in my head what I have to do to these. Um, so let's just talk about that a bit. But first, how does a banshee solder? Well, you know what? I, I've used that word banshee here and there all my life, like just about everybody, but I finally looked up the definition of it. And the definition is a wailing Irish woman screaming out a warning of impending disaster. So, gee, I don't want to solder like that, so I will no longer solder like a banshee, just to make that clear. That's over. Okay. Now, so a couple ways to treat these. If, if I was just on my own here, what I would try to do is mechanically scrape off the stuff. And I would, can you see this? I would lay the wire on my finger like that, and get out my X-Acto knife and just start a scraping away. Now there's a number of conductors in there, they're kind of bungled up like this. So you can imagine as you scrape, you're just scraping maybe one of the wires, you're not scraping them all. But what happens is uh, on your finger, as you push on these, they slowly flatten out like this, and then you can scrape the whole surface. You can scrape it like that, then you scrape it like that, then you can kind of mess it up a little bit and maybe scrape in these edges a little bit. That's what I would do, that's what I did that's what I've done all my life when it comes to wire scraping. Um, another option is to try to burn it away. I've tried this in the past with little wires like these. I get out my uh, cigarette lighter <coughs> and put the flame on it and I can just watch the wire burn back. Because you can lose an inch really fast. Um, so I'm not inclined to try that, uh, the flame technique. And I'm certainly not going to bring out my uh, blowtorch. <laughs> Try it with a blowtorch. For sure, it will just melt away these very thin wires, and it happens like that. You know, these long ones. Okay, I can afford that mistake. These shorter ones, not really. I don't want to lose any of this length. So, uh, no one commented on another technique, which is just take the wire the way it is, just wrap it around a terminal a whole bunch, and apply a lot of solder. And somewhere in there, the solder will connect with this wire in the terminal, and you'll you'll have a good connection. Um, a little bit of a gamble on that one, I think. <clears throat> so, what am I going to try here? Uh, what am I going to try? I'm going to try the mechanical scraping method. <clears throat> and that requires me to find my exacto knives. Here they are. Oh my gosh, I didn't tell you this morning a disaster. Right off the bat this morning. It's a miracle I have a cup of coffee here to drink because. I was paralyzed to discover my coffee maker has stopped working. Oh no. Oh no. I was just paralyzed in my kitchen this morning looking at the coffee maker. <laughs> Pushing the on off button again and again and again. Oh, come on coffee maker, make some coffee. Well, yeah, I did manage to make coffee. I just boiled the water in another kettle and poured it into the coffee maker. But Hey, how about a little close-up on this action? That'd be helpful to me, too. Give me one second here while I get that set up. There we go. That's pretty good like that, I would think. Let's see what happens when I pick it up here. Just like this, just like this.
something a little wrong here. Let's try that. Shot of my fingers there, right? Now, one of the problems with doing this is you really, I mean, I got this on a close up camera, but with your own eyes, you can't really see what success you're having. See, I've made the conductors fan out. Suppose I can drag my uh, voltmeter, my ohmmeter, across this, and uh, actually I can see quite a bit of shiny copper. Yeah, hey, this is working quite well. I'll try and turn it over, which is a bit of a trick. Yeah, when I was a kid fooling around with electronics, uh, much like I am today, I had zero equipment and zero tools. So I, I learned to do everything with next to nothing. And, and you see some of that in my shop here when you watch me work. You'll see, well, well why, why is he doing that? Why doesn't he have the right tool? Why, why? It's just because of the, the way I've come along in life. I think most of uh, the people my age, um, not saying how old I am, I'll let you keep guessing, uh, grew up in a world where you had, you know, six toys six toys, one of them didn't work, and uh, one of them was a cardboard box for crying out loud. And you just learn how to make the most out of six toys. What do you think? So I'm looking for the shiny surfaces, which I can see with my eye up here. I guess it's the way the light is aimed. Uh, I'm getting lots of reflections back. When you see that metallic sheen on things, like this scraped up copper, what you're actually seeing is light, uh, I don't even want to say reflecting, light uh, coming back from uh, the metal surface, because the surface of the metal is, uh, is actually a, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, the only word I can think of is a pile. A pile of little jiggly electrons uh, hanging around on the, basically on the surface. Although we could debate a long time what a surface means. And because they're up on the surface, the, uh, when the light photons come along, they uh, result in a, uh, I'll use the word reflection, but I don't think it's the right word. And you see that metallic sheen that you only see on metals. And that's what I'm looking at very thoroughly here. This is coming along really well. You know what? I spent a long time thinking about this over the last few days. This exact point here. How will I prepare these wire ends? Because I'm not doing very much. I'm doing like a quarter inch here. So if you look at a dull piece of metal, I think I've said this about a dozen times on videos, like some old aluminum, you'll notice the uh, uh, metallic sheen is completely gone. And it's become kind of a dull gray surface. And that's because the sea of electrons is now hidden below a cap of uh, some kind of uh, corrosion product of aluminum, almost certainly aluminum oxide, by the way. And if you polish up or scrape up that aluminum, you'll see once again the, you know, the, the shiny stuff we're so used to seeing. You know, who, who needs a big, you know, hadron collider or something to see stuff? You can look at a piece of metal with your eyeballs and see the effect of the electronic structure on the surface of the metal. just with your eyeballs. 
Now, when I say that, you know, my own personal belief about this stuff, it's not really a belief, it's just the way I view it, is uh, things like our eyes and our ears, they are miracles, absolute miracles. And I don't mean that in any kind of religious sense whatsoever. Um, what they are doing and the fact that they developed biologically, to me, is just unbelievable. Of course, most everything about the world is absolutely unbelievable. Absolutely. When you really stop and think about it, oh my God, it's overwhelming. See, see, I can think about these things while I'm scraping a wire. It's overwhelming. Uh, talking about overwhelming, I haven't said much about this, but I watched a video on YouTube uh, about a week ago, and it's left me, uh, I won't say disturbed, well, you might say disturbed, but uh, it put, I'll just give it a real quick synopsis, it put forward the concept that uh, consciousness is actually a quantum effect occurring in our brains. And this is not a minor little theory, it's not a crazy idea. But when you flesh the whole idea out, it's very, very unnerving. So our consciousness is really a uh, collapsing of the uh, probability wave taking place inside structures called tubules inside of our synapses. These tubules, which are all over the place in, uh, in, in our bodies and other animals, um, are so small, so tiny, that they actually are uh, able uh, to support quantum effects inside the tube. And uh, the thinking is that these tubes are really the crux of our being. Little, tiny tubes inside of our synapses. I mean, hundreds of them in one synapse, not one. Hundreds and hundreds of them in a synapse, something like that. Check it out. Look up quantum consciousness and have a look at what uh, um, Penrose says about it and uh, then you can be just as disturbed as me about what is really going on in this world who we are what we are and everything <laughs> yeah okay I think I got enough there it's not much but I think I have enough now next question next question would be how exactly are we going to solder those? Now, there's, there, there's two elements to that. One is the actual action of soldering them, and the other one is which wire goes where on here. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can figure out which wire goes where without too much trouble. Soldering them on, though. Are they, by any chance, are they still long enough? If they're long enough, I would use them. I think they are. I think they are. Wow, hey, that would be a lucky break. That's kind of a funny thing to say, isn't it? A lucky break. getting ahead of myself anyway. Uh, let's see, I, I should probably, the order I should be doing this in is probably identify which wires go where. Take this tube and fix it onto here, glue it on, glue it on down here at the bottom. Solder up the connections. Test it for continuity and proper connections. Slide the can on. When I slide this can on, should I worry about this fitting locking into this piece at the top? 
And I think I'm going to try and resolder this too. Um, I, I doubt it's really critical, you know. And you know what? You know what? I'm not going to glue it at the top. I'll just push it on. The ring will be fixed on here. It won't be able to turn. It's going to give it the, the support that it needs at the top. But if we're crying out loud, I get this whole thing back on the radio, and then I go, oh, oh i got to take it out again. I won't face the problem of this thing being locked up at the top of the can. This will just come right out. Coil, wires, base and all. And for the next guy, uh, 25 years from now, who's going to take this apart <clears throat> and wonder what the heck ever happened to it. <laughs> He'll be making a video and commenting on this capacitor. He'll say, oh, look at that old capacitor there. That's what he'll be saying. So, which wire goes where? Okay, I'm going to sort that out. I think I'm going to do it off camera. Because there's going to be too much babbling involved while I do it. Okay, one of the uh, first steps here is to try to determine which of these coils is which. Now, I know it was in this way. Uh, do I really have I moved these wires around so much I don't know top from bottom anymore? No, definitely. The long wires are at the top of this thing. I can't get that wrong. I'm trying. I'm trying, but I can't get it wrong. So I thought I'd measure the resistance. One should be 5 ohms, one should be 4 ohms. I mean, it's pretty easy to guess. The one with more wire is going to have a higher resistance. The wires look identical. But, because I'm, I'm really like self-punishment, let's just... This will also prove if I've got some bare copper out here. I'm sure I do. I mean, I can see it. There's no question about it. I'm putting these clips on these fine little wires. Big honking clips. Okay. Hmm. It's supposed to be 4 ohms or 5 ohms. I almost never use this meter for an ohm meter, by the way. This is my. Let's get a little bit of grip on this one. And the other one fell out. Okay, you know what? I'm unsure of this meter. I have no reason to think it's wrong, but let's go with the tried and true here. The tried, and I believe it's true. for the week is corollary. There we go. Why would you bring that up, Jim? I'm just filling some time in here while I... 20 is the lowest reading I saw there. It wasn't long enough to trust it, though. It's okay putting one finger on the lead here like this, as long as you don't put it on both. What has happened there? Oh, shoot. This is not going well. Just getting readings all over the place here. Probably because these wires aren't as clean as they look. Wow, let's try the other coil. I'm getting nowhere. Okay. It's not very reassuring. In there. I didn't flick once, did it? There it goes, there it goes. <coughs> well, this is not going to work, not at this rate. 
I think to get an accurate resistance reading, I'll have to, I'd have to solder uh, little leads on the end of these and then test those little leads to get a good reading. So that's not going to work. Okay, so is there any other hint on which one goes where? Is there any more hints or do I just gamble on at this point? The bigger coil has the higher resistance. I don't, I don't know the uh, logic behind the larger coil will be part of the secondary or the larger coil will be part of the primary. I'm not aware of that. It's like 5 ohms. Oh, yeah, let's just be sure here. Five ohms on the primary side. Four ohms on the secondary. Is there any other hint in there anywhere? Anywhere? Anything? I'm looking, looking, looking. Give me any kind of hint at all. Uh, the size of the capacitor. It's a 110 on one side and it's a 220 on the other. And the other side has this. 180 on it so okay so it's clear where the other side is and the uh, coil connections are made across the capacitor the two the two uh, 110 and 220 capacitors oh you know what Ooh, there's got to be an issue on uh, the uh, polarity of this coil there may be an issue that you need these coils uh, to be uh, you know, wound the same way. I don't know if that's true or not. Oh, 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 oh. Well, um, assumably, these things are engineered well enough at those wires. Whoops, not there. Over here. The, the, the wires are going to tell me which terminal. They're, they're not likely to come off and go across. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, have some faith. Oh boy, I'm, I'm gambling. So there's the capacitor. And what, I put the diamond coil already. There's the capacitor. That's on the secondary side. And the secondary is the lower resistance. So that looks like the secondary. And it was going to go on this side, on these two terminals. Okay, let's try a little dry fitting here. Probably, if I were doing this, and I am doing this, <laughs> I would put it so the shorter wires, which have less reach, are favored positionally over the longer wires, the longer reach, not long enough. Yeah, see, I was kind of hoping the wires came out of the coil on either side. And that would be a further indication of which one goes where. But in fact, the wires come out on the same side here. That's not helping me. Okay, so we know we know this is the secondary side. I mean, we're going to look at the letters underneath here. Also, H. H and C. And now it's really clear to me that, you know, these two or these four, if you like these two pairs, are the actual terminals because of the way the physical structure is with these capacitors in here. It's now very, very clear to me. Now these two terminals are free. One's being used for a handy purpose. And then these two terminals, uh, one's picking up this capacitor here. This is probably the ground. This probably goes to ground in the radio. Just waiting for that great reassurance that I've got it right. I must have it right now. No, see, that's <laughs> that's totally backwards. So these. Oh, yeah, that's right. Secondary. That's right. Goes here. It's just a tiny bit too short. Just a tiny. I got this on all the way. Yeah. Come on. Tell me one wire won't make it. 
wire will make it to any? See, this wire will make it to these terminals. Drat. Drat. The wires haven't gotten shorter since I ripped this thing out. If anything, they're longer. They're not shorter. This one's got a lot of slack. Okay, so if I try it the other way around, this is now the primary. Can it can it make it back to the primary terminals? No and yes. If I rotate it this way a little bit. That'll make it. That'll make it. Just barely. Now well, these ones make it. All I got to do is get to this resistor here. Yeah. Okay, I think I won the cigar. Now. Okay, so I'm trying to memorize the situation here. The secondary side. Secondary. I don't know. I don't know how to memorize that. Gluing. Okay, gluing. Got to do the glue. Gluing, gluing. Um, I wouldn't want to use hot glue in there. I think that's crappy. Um, it's less permanent though. But very hard. Very hard to stick hot glue in something like that. I, I need a liquid glue. Uh, epoxy would be the best choice. Epoxy. I wonder if I have any epoxy around anywhere at all. Oh, look at that. <laughs> okay, got some epoxy. Uh, uh, I think that's the way to go. Now, uh, epoxy's permanent. What happens if I put this coil in wrong? Let's say I glue it in, and then I come back, and within two minutes I go, oh, no, no, this is supposed to be the other way. Um, the worst case, I have to extend these wires slightly. And what I would do is I would extend the terminals up with some stiff wire and then fix these wires to the new extender. So it's really not the end of the world if I get this locked into the wrong place. I'm just wondering now, does that bottom is that bottom piece also rotating? part that's not supposed to rotate. No, I think it's locked in real solid. A little bit of glue in there. It's a good idea to do this because uh, I've never turned this one through its through its range. And when we put this back together, I may need that range to make this thing tuned properly. Seems fine though. Ooh, a little bit grabby there. Yes, I now believe we are walking around with Schrodinger's cat in our head. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up Schrodinger's cat. But if you're watching my videos, chances are you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's take it right, right to the edge here. Yeah, it turns fine. I was thinking uh, about uh, applying heat to the top of the can. I used my blowtorch on this. I just thought just came to my mind. Heating this up, I discovered the can. The whole can got really hot. There's more heat than I expected in it. There must have been heat in this uh, threaded piece, which would have been conducted down to the carbon piece down there, or whatever this material actually is. And there's a chance I could have I could have wrecked this this I could have like uh, melted out the glue that's holding it together or who knows what I could have done something bad in here with all that heat, but I didn't. So I got away with something. Okay, I think we're ready to glue it on. Moving forward, got to find some. Uh, so I got my brand new glue, but I think I got some on the go here too. I got to look and see if I can find some. I want to open up a new package unnecessarily. 
and I stopped the video if I could find my mouse. Here it is. Okay, see ya. Oh, no, I'm not stopping. I'm just halting. Halting? <laughs> I'm just parking. Okay, now because uh, epoxy gives you only so much time to work with, I really got to be ready to mix the epoxy and apply it and put that post in properly. And I can't fiddle around here too much um, while I'm doing it. So, in order to prepare myself, I'm going to pretend first of all. So here we go. We're going to pretend. Okay, mix it up. Foxy's ready to go. Okay, so I only have two hands, right? So get some epoxy. Drop it in there. Put it all over the place in there. What if I make a big mess in there? Well, the worst thing is I can get it on the threads. I want to get it on the threads in there. That's the main thing. So no. No epoxy on the threads. Okay, so now I got lots of epoxy there. Take this, make sure I'm grabbing it by the top end, wires down. Yeah, you know what? I better not better not do this. Okay, if I do this and stick it around in there, and then I go like that, uh oh, that's not good. I'll have epoxy all over the top of that rod. That's a kind of mistake I don't want to make. I could see myself without thinking, load in the epoxy, and get this far and go, oh no. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to avoid. Okay, so this will go down. Shove it on. And then turn it into the right position. The right position is the secondary side is facing away from this capacitor. In the end, they may have to make one extension, maybe two, to make these wires connect, but now, based on my ohm meter reading here, as my brain is thinking away, I think I'm going to do a little more scraping before I actually glue it. So I'm going to do that off camera, scrape it a little more, bear up a little more wire here. Okay, I think I'm ready now. So let's just... Now, uh, mixing epoxy, I developed my own personal little trick, which I'm happy to share. Uh, one of the problems with epoxy is mixing it 50-50 from the two tubes and knowing you've done that. And I used to just squeeze it into a pool and then kind of look at the handle and kind of figure it out from there whether I had an equal amount. Uh, that's really a, a lousy way of doing it. So there's a lot of air in here. I won't worry about the air. So what I do now is I lay down, I, I put this air, squeeze out two lines of it. I can look at the two lines and I can see which one I have more of and I can balance it out. And then once I have two balanced amounts, then I mix them together. Isn't that, now that's a really intelligent move, isn't that, boy, I tell you, sometimes. Don't need much either. And something's going wrong. I only got it out of one. The other one, the other one. So this is the problem with this stuff. Oh, I think the plunger might be stuck. Get ready for a shot here. Ooh, there it goes. <laughs> and there you have the, the... So I can easily see how my... Oh, for crying out loud. Okay, let's try again. We'll just try it over here. Here we go. Two balanced lines coming. Beautiful. There we go. Okay. Stop coming out. Great. Get the little top out of here. Fantastic. One thing about this kind of glue is you get it on your fingers and it's... Uh, oh, that's great. Start it backwards. Here we go. Come on. Oh, for crying out loud. It goes on this way. <laughs> probably, <clears throat> probably contaminated enough. I'll never get that off again. We will see. Okay, now we do the mixing. This is five minute epoxy. Another thing I've learned about epoxy is uh, mix it up really good. This is not the kind of stuff that mixes easily. 
Uh, it's not like water. It's an interesting video on YouTube on mixing viscous fluids. Shows you that, in fact, when you think it's all mixed up, it's not really mixed up yet. And the more you mix it, the faster it goes, too. Can you overmix it? Only if the stick gets stuck in it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is a one-shot deal here. Is everybody yelling, stop, Jim? You forgot something. You've forgotten something. Don't do it. Oh, it's a wrong... <laughs> okay, into the wrong pool here. This will actually help lock the uh, lock that collar down. Oh, this stuff's getting thick already. Holy smokes! Move it. Let's move it. Get to move on. Don't get it on the threads. Okay. Now, got the top, got the bottom. Putting it on. Definitely. Putting it on. Kind of spinning it around there to pick up the glue and. Sweep it inside a little bit. Okay, now, which way? So, the secondary side faces away from the secondary side capacitor. There we have it. Look at that. Okay, I gotta leave that sitting for five minutes. I'll continue listening to the radio in the meantime. Oh, now, something interesting about this. You don't, don't throw this out right away leave it. You can come back every couple minutes and you can test the pool. What's happening in this pool is what's happening in here. So you don't have to fiddle with this to figure out if it's gone solid. You can just fiddle with this and figure out what's happening to it. So I don't want to mix it up anymore. So I'll just leave that. Five minutes and the time is 9.45 in the morning. Come back in five or ten minutes. That's right. Actually, I have something interesting to do while we wait for that to, uh, to solidify, and that is a little experiment with this apparently temperature-sensitive capacitor. I'm going to hook this up on the capacitor tester, and then I'm going to heat it up and cool it down, I'm going to see what happens to its capacitance. Doesn't that sound like an exciting thing to do while we wait for glue to dry? It's actually not drying, is it? It's polymerizing, I believe, is what's going on inside that glue right now. So there, I got the 680 capacitor sitting here. I think I'm probably going to reinstall that in the radio. But uh, I think this test might reveal something. It may even reveal I'm just so clued out about what I'm up to. So I need some, uh, I need some hot, I need some cold. Now, I got the cold here. Here's the cold. And the hot uh, I can get from this little Oh, don't put it in the glue, man alive. See, there's something I didn't think of. Put the glue somewhere where I won't stick my elbow in it. And how is it coming along anyway? What's it been? Three minutes? Okay, so it's getting polymerizing. Nicely. Beautiful. Here comes my older cat, Spunky. He's going to call me. I knew it. Okay, since everybody loves to see my cat. Spunky, come here. want to go in the garage. Is that what you want? We'll wander around the garage for a bit. This is a good thing to do while you wait for glue to dry or uh, set also. It's monkey here. He's uh, 17 and a half years old. Okay, is that good for you now? Are you in good shape now? Ready to go and face the world? Find a good spot to sleep? Go throw up a hairball somewhere? 
There it is, anyway. No, my camera's uh, not liking the amount of light here. Okay, Spunky. Off you go. There he goes. Wandering on his way. Oh, I thought for a minute he was going to do the hairball thing there. But uh, Funny thing about cats, isn't it? If you have a cat, cats are very fastidious. Fastidious about uh, just about everything except for where they like to barf. They just barf anywhere they're standing. Anywhere. doesn't matter. Okay, so I killed a bit of time there. Let's check the epoxy. Oh, it's really, it's really toughening up. Perfect. No problem there. Uh, so this is all warmed up. You can, once again, I'm having trouble showing you the actual eye, so you'll have to believe me when I say what I say. So first, we want to measure this. I think this was all set from the last time. Getting anything here. Hmm. Sure, we were getting it right in there. Maybe I'm just confused. So this is a 680. 680 picofarad point. 680 picofarad, which is a 0 0.6 or 0 0.0006. 0 .00. Okay, it's right on. It's right on the money. That's exactly 0 0.006. I'm just getting a little bit confused. So first we'll cool it down. And you can kind of see the eye in the camera there. Uh, let me just see if I can make it just a little bit better for this exciting moment here. As soon as I can find what I did with my camera. Camera, it's right here in front of me for crying out loud. Just bear with me a second here. None of those worked worth a hoot. Yeah, this is going to work. be the best presentation, but there's a big old eye. Let's do a little better focus on it. Hang on, bear with me. There we go. Okay, uh, and if I turn off this light, presto, hey, there you go, now you can see the eye, finally. Okay, I'm in the dark though. So let me just make sure we're right on the money here. I'm going to. Okay, that's that's the measurement. And then we'll now spray it. You'll hear the spray. So here we go. It, it is cold. It is it is definitely it's frosted right up. Uh, you know, other than the sudden jerk of the spray, probably... What? Come on, I thought I gave you the scratch you wanted. You know, we're live to millions of people in the world, Spunky. You know, you should really... Okay. But we'll try the heating up thing now. That was not impressive. I must have drove the temperature of this thing down to like minus 50 or quarter or something crazy like that. But we will now drive it upwards. Sometimes when you don't have enough light, a uh, autofocus will stop stop working. Okay, so that's nice and warm coming out of there. Except for it'll get up to 100 degrees C coming out of here, so it's not really hot. 
Okay. There we go. What's it going to do? I'm going to apply it now. We're cooking it now. It's being cooked. Its temperature must be up. It must be up a lot. Okay, I'm going to take the heat off. The heat is off. Now, my machine's going to get a little loud here. It has an automatic cool off uh, mode it goes through. Wow, I don't know. What do you make of that? pretty extreme test. I mean, I took this thing probably from minus 50 up to, uh, what's well, still warm, up to uh, probably close to 100. And I didn't see a change in its capacitance at all. I didn't see anything. So either I'm wrong about this being the temperature sensitive capacitor. Maybe I'm just wrong about it. I still don't know why a weird one like this would be in there. Or its variation is so tiny uh, as to not be visible on my uh, testing instrument. That's not very likely. If it was, if that's the case, it's hardly changing. I can't imagine it affecting the radio very much. Okay, I think we've killed all the time we need to kill. Let's check the epoxy now. She's stuck real good. So I can trust that this is stuck really good too, which means I'm stuck really good with the situation. But I think it's a good situation next phase is to solder these wires on. So let me, uh, let me get set up to do that. <laughs> 